Hi everybody, welcome to another edition of Ask Leo Pizza. I'm your host, Leo Spaziri, and today what I want to do is talk about Italian flours and specifically talk about proteins and something that's called a W. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you some of the lineup at Le Cinque Stagioni and use these as a basis of different protein levels different strengths of flour and I want to give you a bit of a chemistry lesson here so that everybody can understand what exactly it means to talk about proteins and starches and all these different things that are involved when determining the proper flour to use for your pizzas or bread okay what you're gonna to learn today from me can also be taken not only with the Cinque Stagioni line but you can use this information in general when talking about any different type of flour that's on the market so that you'll know what the difference between the different protein amounts there are and again how to decide how to best use that flour. The first thing I want to do is talk about the different types of uh, flours that we have here and then I want to go into a little bit more in depth and talk about the proteins and the strength. Okay. The first one I want to show you is this Cinque Stagioni Pizza Napolitana flour. Okay. This Napolitana flour was created specifically to make the authentic Neapolitan pizza. Okay. You got to remember that 300 years ago when this um, product was developed or when they first documented the first Neapolitan pizzas, there wasn't a lot of technology around. Okay. So the doughs that you made uh, in your pizzeria 300 years ago would have sat out ambiently, maybe at room temperature, and then once they were used, uh, once they, they, uh, they, they were ready, they were used basically right out of the box, stretched out, and put directly into a very hot oven, okay? So that being said, the protein level on this flour in particular is 11 for an 11.5% protein, okay? Now, 11.5% protein sounds like it's a little bit weak, okay? But realistically, what we're talking about doing is playing off of two different principles here. You have something in Napolitana pizza where you're using a little bit higher hydration in your dough. Hydration being the amount of water that's in your dough formula, okay? As that water is inside of this dough, okay, it goes into a very hot oven. Typically, Neapolitan pizza is cooked anywhere between... 850 to 900 degrees. Some guys go a little bit hotter and uh, again you hear the classic margarita pizza referred to all the time as a 90 second pizza. Depending on the oven temperature you'll see that come down to even um, 70 uh, seconds. Okay so it's pretty quick. So because you have this dough that might be a little bit wet, it's never been in refrigeration so it's a little bit looser. Okay. You don't need a very strong flour and you don't need a very high level of yeast to get that to pop in the oven, okay? Pop meaning that the crust is gonna rise very nicely, it's gonna be very well baked through, okay? What's happening is we refer to this as oven spring in the oven. So what's happening is the water that's inside the dough, once it goes into that hot oven, is gonna be released as steam. That steam is gonna push out, okay, from inside the dough and it's going to it's going to get trapped inside of the structure of the dough itself, okay? That structure is called the gluten net. Now, the gluten net is really important to understand and how it relates to proteins because as soon as water touches flour, okay? There's a, there's a transformation that happens, okay? So what's happening is you have um, proteins and you have sugars, okay? Now, sugars get broken down into uh, complex and sh simple sugars, um, the complex um, uh, ones uh, being uh, starches, okay? And, uh, and then they break down into simple sugars that we can, without going into a big science lesson, uh, again, get, to get used up by the dough, and that's what uh, aids in fermentation, that's what uh, the, yeast, the yeast itself will eat and allow it to grow, okay? The proteins, okay, there's four different proteins. In dough making, we're concerned about two, okay? So you have uh, soluble and non-soluble proteins, okay? The non-soluble ones in particular are the ones that are referring directly to the gluten formation of the dough or this gluten net, okay? The two, pro the two proteins are called glutenine and gliadine, okay? Glutenine is what gives 
um, the dough itself, um, its strength, okay, uh, its elasticity. So if you ever seen a guy take a, a dough ball, stretch it out, and then start pulling it and throw it in the air, okay, the dough has been very well developed, okay, and the ability that it's not gonna, it's gonna stretch and not rip, okay, is part of this protein from the uh, the gluten. Gliadine is what we call uh, the agent that gives it its tenacity, what will allow it to stretch and stretch and then not break, so it gets strength, okay. So these two factors inside of the dough itself, okay, are a big player in this gluten nut. Now, when I talk about oven spring and I talk about the uh, the moisture or that steam inside of the dough, puffing up the dough ball and then all of a sudden you lock it because what's happening is the dough is getting cooked and it's got nowhere to go. So whenever you go on Facebook or you see all these pizzaioli out there uh, showing pictures of the edge of the cornicioni, you see them showing looks like almost like a spider web. What you're really seeing there is that gluten net and the development. And if it's properly developed, that's when you get those beautiful air pockets. And the final product that you get out of that is uh, very light, airy, crispy, that sort of thing. Okay. Now, the Cinque Stagioni uh, Pizza Napolitana flour, like I said, is 11.5% protein. But it has a W factor of 300. Well, what the heck is a W? I get this question all the time. There's been some guys doing videos out there that have actually talked a little bit about W, but they never really got into what a W factor really is, okay? So going back into the technical portion of how dough, or I'm sorry, how flour is actually milled, okay? They use a machine called a Chopin alveograph. Very technical machine. It's actually a really cool machine. And if you ever went to uh, see the mill at Agugiaro in, uh in Venice, Italy, they're the producers of the La Cinque Stagioni flour. They actually have a very uh, state-of-the-art lab with one of these uh, alveographs in it. What they do is the scientists or the technicians inside of this lab, after they take the, uh, the grains and they grind them down into flour, they take a sample of that and they test the gluten strength, okay? What they do is they actually make a little portion of dough. There's actually a controlled dough formula that's used. So they know how much water based on how much flour is used. Okay. They make this dough. They put it inside the machine. Okay. And then what the machine does, it takes that little bit of dough and it puffs it up into a, into a bubble. Okay. And what the machine does is it actually tests the strength of that bubble and how much pressure can go inside of the bubble until it bursts. Okay, and that's how they come up with a W number. Okay, so now the W factor on this Napolitana flour is 300. Why is that important? Uh, an important number to know. The reason it's important is because this is what's going to allow you to figure out how the dough can be created, how much fermentation can be put into that dough, meaning how long that dough can sit out without it blowing or deflating on itself. Okay. And as you talk about the different lines, a W of 300, even though we're talking about a weaker flour here, uh, let's say, for example, uh, this, uh, this is 11.5% pro protein, we can look at this uh, Cinque Stagioni uh, Tipo Uno, okay? This is a, a, a flour that's uh, macinata in pietra, okay? Which means that it's stone ground. Now, again... In Italy, if you were to go visit the Agogiato Finia mill and uh, look at the way that they produce this Cinque Stagioni Tipo Uno flour, okay, all of these flours are considered double zero, okay? Double zero refers to the grind, okay? So when the flour, when the grain actually goes into the mill, it gets sucked in through a, a, a series of vacuums. It starts, let's say, on the fourth floor of the building, for example. At that point, the, um, uh, the, the grain itself gets cleaned. Okay, they add humidity or steam into that so they can separate the grain into its key parts. Okay, once the grain is separated into its key parts, okay, the, 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 the let's say the grains are sifted so all those are broken and then they start to get ground. Okay, the, the highest or the most open setting that that's uh, that that grinding begins at, okay, would be at let's say um, uh, a one or even two. Okay being the thickest, coarsest grind, okay? 
Now, tipo uno refers to the number one setting, okay? They're still using the same process that they used, you know, the uh, many, many years ago to grind this, except that um, what's happening now is it used to be back in the day a flour mill would be connected to some sort of river or flowing body of water, okay? On the outside, there would be this wheel that would go in the water and it would constantly spin with the force of the current of the river or body of water that's flowing. Again, remembering that there was no electricity or technology back in the day, this spinning wheel would be hooked up to a series of gears, okay, and sprockets that would be hooked up to these stone plates, okay? These are granite stones, okay? And again, the technology that they're using today is very similar to what they used many, many years ago. Um, these granite stones are crushing the grain and they're grinding until they reach this number one setting, okay? Now, a number one setting um, uh, won't refine the flour as much as when you get down into these z double zero characteristics, but as it's grinding, okay, some of the exterior of the um, of the grain, the bran, if you will, like the husk, actually gets um, added, incorporated into the flour itself. So in Italy, um, you would hear this referred to sometimes uh, as, uh, let's say, half wheat. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with whole wheat flour, okay? Whole wheat flour has all of the wheat grain inside of it. Now, this is partially refined. So you do have some of the grain in there that, uh, again, is um, uh, still reminiscent of that whole grain, but it's more refined up until that number one setting. Having that number one setting in there, and my point to this whole thing, is that this flour has a protein level of 13%, but it has a W factor of 300%. So you're asking yourself, how could this have the same W of 300 as this has the same value of 300, but the protein level is 11 and a half and the protein level is 13 on here. Again, it comes down to the amount of water that can be absorbed, the amount of gluten that's inside of that flour and its ability to stretch and hold that air so that when it goes into the oven, you've got that nice strong gluten network and it won't deflate on top of itself, okay? So again, I know that a lot of people, especially in the United States, are all hung up on the protein level of the flour, but if you're gonna take your pizza making or your bread making to the next level, it's really important to start to understand what this exact W factor is, okay? I wanna talk about two other flours that are stronger. Now these are double zero flour. This red bag, the one with the red writing, this is called Oro, O-R-O, -O, okay, or gold in English. If you're buying Cinque Stagioni flour, you can either ask for it in oro or gold. It's the same exact thing, just depending on how it's referred to. In Italy, it's referred to oro. In the United States, it's referred to as gold. Now, you also have the blue writing, okay? This blue writing in Italy is referred to as superiore or, in English, superior. What's the difference? The superior is a protein level of 13%. The oro or gold is a protein level of 14%. Now here's the big difference. The superior flour has a W number of 330, where the oro has a W number of 390. So even though the protein is very close, okay, 13 and 14% is considered very close, the W number is very different. Now why is this very important? So as we begin to talk about long fermented doughs, doughs that are gonna be created today, balled up, put into refrigeration, and not used for let's say 48 to 72 hours, okay? When we talk about the proteins and starches and that sort of thing that's inside the flour and how the actual flour is broken down in the dough making process, okay? A heavier flour like this will allow you to use more water it will allow you to ferment for a longer time. Fermenting for a longer, longer time is gonna give you more complex flavors, okay, in the actual dough. Not only is it gonna give you more complex flavors, okay, it's also gonna give it a, the dough a chance because of the yeast activity, it's gonna allow that, uh, that CO2 that's released. As the yeast that's eating the, the, the sugars inside of this dough, as it eats, 
that 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 yeast culture basically fills up. Imagine drinking a can of soda; you get filled up with air, and then it lets out a burp. Okay, so in that process of burping, if you will, it's releasing carbon dioxide inside of itself. Okay, now most guys that do, let's say, a 48 to 72 hour long fermented dough in cold refrigeration, what they'll usually do at some point is do what's called degassing the dough or booking. Booking meaning that they take this batch of dough, they'll fold it on top of itself a few times before they actually make their dough balls, okay? This is called bulk fermentation in this process. So you got this big batch of dough that's made, you put it in a uh, Lexan container, you stick it in the cooler for 24 hours. After 24 hours, you book and fold it a couple times, get some of that extra gas out of it. You um, that, that, that carbon dioxide is in, is in there what it does is it raises the pH level, the acidity of the dough itself. Okay, so as this raises up, you got that acidic dough now. That carbon dioxide actually turns into almost like toxic sludge, if you will. Um, after a while that it's in there, it'll actually break down the dough at a very fast rate. So at some point, if you are working or you're going to start playing around with long fermented doughs, you're going to start experimenting with two things, bulk fermentation, you're going to degas your dough, and then finally you're going to figure out where the sweet spot is of your dough so that you can make these dough balls, put them away in your dough boxes, and then let's say another 24 to 48 hours, you would pull them out, stretch out your dough, and make your pizzas. The last thing I'm going to talk about with these is that a W level of 390 this is a great dough, a um, great flour to use for a dough that's going to be long fermented with a lot of water. Okay, uh, typically you might see um, a uh, let's say a Sicilian pan pizza with a very high uh, hydration level, a lot of water in it, used with this flour. But the understanding being that you can use a lot more water because it has a lot of water absorbing properties, but once you actually make this dough, you let the dough sit for a while, it absorbs all that water, okay? Um, now you've got a dough that's very strong. So as you go to stretch it in the pan, okay, what's going to happen is you got a lot more um, opportunity to let this dough rise and open up and get all those beautiful pockets, which they refer to as cell structure, okay? Now, that cell structure, again, talking about all my friends on, uh, on Facebook and uh, Instagram that put these pictures with these pizza crust that have these giant holes or air pockets in it, that's how they did it. So you've got a, a flour that will absorb a lot of water, okay? You've got a, a W factor of let's say 390, and now you're able to ferment for 48 to 72 hours, breaking down the starches inside the dough, and the final product is something that's very light and crispy. It's really special. And especially after 48 to 72 hours that you've been both fermenting, you're getting these flavors now that are built up. Kind of like some good sourdough, if you will. You get almost like this nuttiness, this um, a little acidity in there, but it's great. The thing that's really great about the Superior, okay, even though this is 13% compared to 14% here, this has a W level of 330. Now, it's a little bit less protein. If you were going to make, let's say, a classic Italian wood-fired pizza or a classic Italian pizza made in an electric oven or a gas oven, okay, this will allow you not to need to do that fermentation step of, let's say, 48 to 72 hours. This is a dough that within 24 to 48 hours, you can build up those characteristics. It'll still have enough strength that you're going to get those fermentation qualities of flavor, it's still going to have enough strength so that once it puffs up in the oven, it won't deflate on itself. So that st cell structure, again, if the flour is too weak, what's going to happen is it'll pop and then it'll fall flat and it'll look kind of gummy in the middle. If you try doing the same thing with, let's say, this Napolitana flour at 11.5 protein with, um, with a W factor of 300, now this will make a very good dough. If you treat it properly, handle it properly, you can put this into refrigeration and make a beautiful dough and use it in 48 hours. But what's going to happen is you're going to have to make some adjustments in water and your process because what will happen, because it's a little bit weaker, it'll puff up. And then if it's got too much water in there, it won't have enough strength to maintain that structure. And what will happen is it'll start to collapse on itself a little bit. All right. That's not a good thing. So here's four very different types of flour with four different types of protein 
But again, I want to focus on the most important thing here, the strength of the actual flower itself and what the W number means in all of these. Okay. One last thing I want to talk about, Cinque Stagioni also makes a full line of different types of flower. Um, in the lineup, they have Semola de Macinata, which is your Semola Durham flower, uh, ground to very fine uh, consistency. Okay. So they call it Grano Duro, okay, your Durham. Then they also have their own instant yeast. Uh, this is brewer's yeast. This is made from this the uh, the beer making process. Okay, this is instant yeast. It's actually very strong. This is a really good product to use. And uh, again, this is something that's all over the place. They're using. They're doing a lot of this. It's actually really nice. Then they have this other product called Nature Craft. Okay, Nature Craft Lieveto Madro Asciutto. Okay, so this is a dry mother yeast. Okay, that um, has been uh, fermented. And then once it's fermented, it's allowed to dry out, and then they grind it, okay? So what you have is uh, this mother yeast that's, um, you know, been fermented. It's been refreshed a few times, meaning that they've taken a portion of the actual culture, this starter that they've made, the mother. They've pulled it out, refreshed it by adding a little bit more um, flour and water so that it's got something to eat on again. It's breaking it down. It's living. It's breathing. It's doing its thing. And then as they do this, they pull a little bit of uh, flour, I'm sorry, dough out, and they keep refreshing this until they get to a certain pH level. pH, again, like I just described in fermentation, is very important because this allows you to give your dough a head start as far as breaking down those starches. Okay, So you're able to use a product like this in the dough itself, which will naturally raise up the pH level, Okay, and then... In a flower, for example, like this superior, that's kind of middle of the road, it's, it's not the strongest in the line, it's not the weakest, but it's kind of middle of the road, with a higher W number, you're able to get some of those really long fermentation notes in a shorter period of time. And usage on this is actually pretty low. You might use, uh, let's say, maybe 30 to 50 grams of these for every, um, let's say, liter of water that you use, okay? So I know in, uh, in the United States, you know, we, we, we get hung up with, you know, flour weight and baker's percentage and this sort of thing. But a product like this was developed by using and figuring out how much water is actually going in. Because, again, that's how, it, how the, the, the gluten network is uh, uh, obviously going to work, how it's going to support the structure of the dough itself. And then finally um, get broken down by a product like this so that you can get that light, airy, crispy texture out of the oven without a really long fermentation time. Okay, So I hope uh, this answers a lot of questions. Uh, I've recently gotten a lot of calls and a lot of uh, emails uh, on Ask Leo Pizza about this subject particularly. I hope this does answer your questions. And uh, if you want to get into this more in depth with me, please feel free to visit my website, which is www.askleopizza.com. Go to the bottom right-hand corner, and there's a chat button. You'll be able to click there. You can either real-time chat with me, or you can um, send me an email, and I'll always respond. It might take me a little day or two to respond, but I always will respond, depending on uh, the volume of activity that we have coming through this site. And then I'll try to answer the questions as best as I can. Okay. If you have a chance, also visit my social media pages. I can be searched as Ask Leo Pizza on Facebook. My Facebook uh, chef page is under Chef Leo Spazzeri. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Ask Leo Pizza. You could find me on Twitter under Ask Leo Pizza. And you could also check out my YouTube channel uh, under Chef Leo Spazzeri for more videos and more of this great information. I hope everybody's having a great time. I hope you're making a lot of pizzas and baking. And as far as I'm concerned, I hope everybody is going to have a great future in making some great doughs, make some great pizzas, and again, support this great pizza industry that we're involved in. Thank you very much, everybody, for listening, and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.